Hello all, uh, I'm Vishal Rain. Uh, I'm quite excited to share a tutorial on water stream using Maya fluid container. In Maya fluid container, we have ponds. So we are going to use a pond here and create a simple water stream effect um, using some textures, uh, procedural textures. Actually, it is a non-dynamic effect. So let's have a look on it. So initially, uh, I'll change my menu to dynamics. You got fluid effects. So if you have familiarity with uh, the fluid containers, like here we got a 3D container, a 2D container. We create fire effects, smoke effects. So whatever the basics you have got with the container, everything generally works here for the pond. So I'm not going to get into the basics of how this containers work so for somebody who is familiar with this for them this tutorial could be easy so I'm going to create a pond now what a pond is it's a container container what you do create with the fluids and um, we have got size nothing more here so this is the size of the container which even can be controlled later after you have created so let's create a pond and what you see is it's a bit different from the regular container how uh, firstly uh, if you see the simulation part here the solver type is spring mesh and the other part is the blue thing what you're seeing on the screen is a height field utility which you find in rendering editors hypershell it's a utility which allows you to see the displacements and color information of a texture in viewport. So you could scroll down and you could see a height field utility. So that's what plugged it here. So if I generally, uh, if you want further more details, you could read uh, about how this works. You could see it. So if you could see, uh, it's a 2D uh, thing. You could see it's a, it has got X and Y axis. There is no Z axis here. So if you see this container in wireframe mode, you could see some polygon size, which is uh, controlled by the resolution here. So I'm going to take a 200 here to get the finer details. So I'll just scroll down. As I said, uh, the water stream effect, what I'm going to create is a non-dynamic effect. It's a procedural effect. So firstly, uh, about size, you could see x-axis. I'm going to increase a bit bigger. I, mean, I want a long stream. Even I could reduce uh, the width. You could see that, a long one. And I scroll down and uh, the displacement here is achieved with the texture opacity. So you could see the surface has been displaced based on the value of the fluid there. It's a texture, procedural texture. There's nothing to do with the dynamics of it. So we have different types of textures, Berlin noise, wispy, space time, which are mostly opted textures by me below not preferable in this case uh, volume wave I'm not interested in taking it and Mandelbrot it's a new one so not suitable for stream effects so switch to Berlin noise as you could see the wave size is quite bigger so I'm going to control the scale texture scale is one in X, one in Y, one in Z. So scale of uh, the texture in specific axis is controlled with every axis you got here. So in X, I'll keep a bigger number. And in Y, I keep a lower number. Why so? It gives a stretched effect water stream flowing down has got a bigger stretchy waves so just want to create a stretch um, and uh, 
the z value does not work as its two two d container so let's leave it like that and it looks quite rough so I reduce the amplitude load and get that nice stream i feel uh, this number is big so let me yeah that works and uh, let me increase the timeline let me play as i said this is a uh, texture based a procedural based effect so i need to play with the textures here to achieve the movement so texture time is like phase animation so it generally changes the phase of the texture so i need to animate this using set key or i could write a simple expression so i just write texture time is equals to time so you could instead of opening expression editor directly if you write equals and write any code it generally works as you expand the window and do it you could see there is a possible connection you could see right from the first frame the value is point zero four two if i switch to 24th frame the value would be one so if you see water simulation that's cool texture is quite uh, smaller so i'll take it one point four point four just want to keep it a little bit bigger for right now water is simulating nicely but i want the texture to be flown so i use texture origin in this case x will help me to move the stream up and down so again i'm writing equals to time this would be quite speed the water would flow fastly so i'm writing texture time is equal texture origin x is equals to time multiplied by 0.1 i mean whatever the value you get with the time it is reduced 90 percent so you get only 10 percent of it you could see it is if the time value is 5.167 here it is 0.517 that's obvious so even 0.1 is quite speed okay if, if you are quite happy with it just go ahead or else still you could reduce this number and if you want the stream downward multiply that the number and want slower so multiply by 0 0.05 so you could see water stream flowing down towards it's quite slow i'll give it one You should see water flowing down. That's cool, isn't it? Uh, if you render, you get something like this. Okay. Uh, in this case, you could achieve uh, some color using the same texture option. But what I need to do is texture color is connected to temperature choose it to y gradient and start controlling the input bias or maybe switching sliding the you could see uh, the foam is in the deeper part so i want it to be on the peak side you could use this for shading purpose So I got some colors. We got some foam caps on the water stream. And 
that's cool and if you are not happy with the way uh, it's looking in render you could always uh, let me do some changes again if you just scroll down here we have got some issue with the incandescence path a viewport performance and render performance is different so Home is too rough actually for this one. Uh, sorry, waves are too rough. So uh, uh, reflections are kind of blocking uh, the least uh, foam emission thing. So I have to keep it a little bit more to show it clearly. Okay. Uh, and I could just go down to textures and reduce the amplitude further down to keep it subtle uh, you could play with the values and if you're not happy the way it's looking here always you could go to modify convert and use convert fluids to polygons option and you get a polygonal mesh which is actually same as good as what you saw in the container the simulation path you could apply all your textures so what do you see is stream flowing down apart from that you could always select the container and create deformers to deform it like um, non-linear bend deformer okay. so you could see stream is bending H here I've used uh, this a uh, bend deformer to get a bendy stream. If you want an uh, irregular shape, you could always use lattice deformer or you could use soft modification tools to achieve your own shapes there. And then you could use particle effects on top of it, which uh, I may discuss um, in another tutorial. I will stop it. So you could see water stream flowing down nicely. And what you got is completely procedural, non-dynamic effect. Uh, we'll be discussing some dynamic effects and um, integrating uh, dynamics and non-dynamic effects to achieve some realistic look. Um, until that, I conclude this session. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.